We are working in Module 3 where we're talking about different ways to customize the QuickBooks environment. We've gone through the preferences, that was actually Section 1, and now we're on Section 2, working with users. Right now, if you open the company file, you would just see QuickBooks. You'd be able to start working right away. If you set up users, as soon as you open the company file, you will have to type in your username and your password in order to access the company file information. It is to your advantage to set up users for each person that will be using your company file. You do have the ability to actually track any changes that each user makes. That is one reason to set these up because you can look at a report called the audit trail and just see what the transaction used to be, what it is now. It's a really good way of tracking down errors. Another really good reason for setting up the users would be if you have employees helping you because then you can limit their access to certain areas in QuickBooks. Only the administrator can add, edit, or delete a user. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and I will show you how to go ahead and start working with users. As I mentioned, only the administrator can add, edit, or delete a user. You would have to be logged in as administrator to do this. You would need to go up to your menu and click on Company, and then you'll see an option that says Set up users and passwords, and then you'll see Set up users. By default, you can have up to five users in QuickBooks. If you need additional users, you do have the ability to purchase them. You will see currently that the administrator is logged on, and you'll see over on the right is the Add, Edit, or Delete User option. Let's go ahead and add a user, and we will say that we have hired a person to come in and help us pay the bills. I'll show you as we go through here how you're able to limit their access to certain areas of QuickBooks. Let's say we go ahead and put in our new user's name, and we'll say it's Carol, and we're going to give Carol a password. Now, a couple things about passwords. You want to make sure that no one else has the same password, and make sure that you ask the administrator know what the password actually is in case Carol happens to leave the company and you want to go ahead and log in as Carol or that sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and click Next, and now it asks me what do you want this user to have access to? All areas of QuickBooks, selected areas, or notice there's an option also for an external accountant. What this option means is if you have an accountant you like to use your QuickBooks, you can give them their own username and password, and that way they don't have access to certain things in here, such as sensitive customer data, if you have credit card numbers, things like that in here. I'm going to choose Selected Areas of QuickBooks and click Next. Now what's going to happen is it's going to walk through a series of screens, and for each of these it's going to ask me, does this user have access to everything in QuickBooks? which would be full access, no access, or selective. The first area it asks about is sales and accounts receivable, and we're going to say no access to that. That would be anything having to do with invoicing customers. The next area it asks about is purchases and accounts payable. Now this is what we hired this person to do. We hired this person to come in and help pay the bills, so we'll give them full access. Now I'm not going to give access to any more areas, but just notice it asks about checking in credit cards, it asks about inventory, time tracking, payroll, sensitive accounting activities. These are things like, in QuickBooks, should this person be able to transfer funds between, let's say, checking and savings? Should they be able to do journal entries? Those are things that we consider sensitive accounting activities, and we're going to say no. The next screen asks about the financial reports that go with those sensitive activities that we just mentioned, so we'll leave that on no access as well. And then it asks about changing or deleting transactions. I would leave this where it defaults. The first one asks, in the area that the person has access to, should they be able to delete or change a transaction? Absolutely. What if our employee actually entered a bill twice and they'd like to delete one of them? This question asks about, should the employee or user also have the ability to change or delete transactions before the closing date? If you remember us talking about using QuickBooks to close the books at the end of the month, what this is saying is, would you want this user to have the ability to go in prior to those close periods and make those changes? And we are going to say no. 
This is a synopsis of the areas it asks about and how we answered each of those questions. I'm going to hit finish and now you'll see that Carol is one of my users. Let me show you how this is going to work. I'm going to go ahead and close this window and I'm going to log out of this company file. Every time you're finished for the day, you should always log out. Go up to file on your menu and now you'll see this option says close company slash log off. This is the screen you should see every day when you come in. You're going to double click on your company file and this time what you're going to notice is it's going to ask you to put in the username and password. Now it has the username of the person that was last logged in. You're just going to type over that and then you're going to put in the actual password and then click OK. One of the first things that you might notice is that you have your icon bar on the left and that's because all of the options are set per user. You might also be saying to yourself, well, I thought we limited Carol's access just to the accounts payable section. Here's what happens if Carol clicks on an icon that she does not have access to. Let's say create invoices, for example. It will pop up with a warning saying that you need sales and accounts receivable permission to perform this action. She will have to ask her administrator to give her permission to get into those areas. That's how this is going to work. Let me go ahead and log back off and we'll log back in as admin again. We're going to close company and log off. And by the way, it will ask you every fourth time that you get out of QuickBooks if you would like to back up your company file. Even if you just backed it up, it will ask you that. Right now I'm going to say no. We'll talk about backing up in a later module. Let me go ahead and double click on our company again. And this time we're going to log back in as admin. Notice it still says Carol, so I'm going to type in admin. And we did not set up a password when we went through the Easy Step interview, but in real life, make sure you set up that password. As the administrator, since you're responsible for the users, you want to make sure that you go ahead and delete any users that have left your company. Maybe you have a new employee and they've replaced Carol. Do not give them the same username and password. Make sure you delete that user and then you go ahead and set up the new user like we talked about. If you needed to change the username or a password, you could always edit the user. And notice a couple of other things. You can set the closing date from here if you were going to use that option to close the books. And that's pretty much what you need to know about how the users work right here. When we get into the reports in a later module, I'll show you that audit trail. I'm going to go ahead and hit close. And that's all we need to talk about as far as users are concerned. Let's go ahead now and move over into lesson three. And we're going to spend a good bit of time talking about the chart of accounts. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to get a free QuickBooks Pro 2020 introductory course, click over there. And click over there to watch all the videos in this QuickBooks Pro 2020 playlist.